Those of you who watched my last video will know that predictions for the Roland Garros quarterfinals didn't go too well, but I'm here to try again with the women's semi-finals. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Quick apology for the lighting again. It is still grey and raining, but I'm also filming later as well, which means we've lost some of the light. Yes, quarterfinals. Didn't go too well from my predictions point of view. I got two of the winners right. I didn't actually get any of the scorelines right. I said Murray in five, he won in four. I said Halep in two, she won in three. So a little bit apprehensive about today. I don't even have a prediction written down yet for the first semi-final, so this could be interesting. So here it is, the first semi-final, the birthday bash, Yelena Ostapenko of Latvia against Tomea Bekšinski of Switzerland. Ostapenko is unseeded and Bekšinski is the 30th seed, so it's been a while on the WTA Tour since we have had a Grand Slam semi with such low-ranked players. That doesn't mean it's not going to be a quality encounter. At the time of filming, Yelena Ostapenko is 19 years old and Tamiya Beshinsky is 27. However, both of them share a birthday, which is actually Thursday at the French Open, so birthday showdown. Kind of gutting, because one of them has to lose. Now let's start with the completely unexpected woman, Yelena Ostapenko. She hasn't actually had an easy run. She came past American Luisa Chirico in three sets in round one, so didn't really look set to do anything monumental. But she brushed aside Olympic gold medalist Monica Puig in straight sets in round two. And of course, she took down Samantha Stoza in round four. Stoza, a semi-finalist here last year and was playing really good clay court tennis. And now Wozniacki, the number 11 seed, granted wasn't expected to make this round of the slam, but Ostapenko still came back from a set down to defeat her. Now Wozniacki might not be the best clay court player, but she has made the latter rounds of Grand Slams before, she was world number one for a couple of years, she has the mentality for these occasions if anyone can have the mentality for these occasions at the moment. Interestingly, Ostapenko had never lost a match to Wozniacki. She'd won both of their previous meetings, and that really gave this match an element of intrigue. Now, the weather was not great on Tuesday in Paris. There was a lot of rain. There were lots of starting and stoppings of the matches. Wozniacki took a 5-1 lead on Ostapenko in the opening set, and from the offset it was clear that this was going to be on Ostapenko's racket. She is an instinctively aggressive player. On all surfaces she will go for broke. That's just her style. Whereas Wozniacki on every surface is the defensive player, the very much the counterpuncher. And it was very windy, very wet in Paris, and Ostapenko was having trouble with the conditions. Definitely it was more suited to Wozniacki, who was pushing the balls back in, not really playing with slim margin. Ostapenko, meanwhile, still going for those big shots, and while she landed some, it just wasn't enough. She was spraying the place with unforced errors, and Wozniacki did take the 5-1 lead. What people did not expect was for Ostapenko to tighten the screws and to come back and be 4-5 and serving. She was a double breakdown. Now, she did drop serve right off there with a few more errors. Wozniacki did very well to stay in the moment and really displayed great calm. Wozniacki has the experience of having had matches interrupted before, she has so many wins under her belt, that people also thought she would cope better with the conditions and the disruptions in the matches. But as impressive as Ostapenko's game was when she had it nailed, absolutely blasting winners, moving Wozniacki from side to side with utter control, it was really her mental strength that stood out in this clash because however many times the players were messed around, however many times the match was interrupted, she regrouped, she refocused, and was dialed in. They were called off for a rain break when Ostapenko was 5-2 up and about to serve in the second set. She'd really got herself together and was developing a rhythm, and it was really quite a cruel place in the match for it to happen. But they came out again, she served it out no problem, and Wozniacki was clearly in bother in the third set as Ostapenko continued to nail winners. Long story short, she was dialed in, and she got the win. 6-2, 6-2 in the last two sets. Ostapenko hasn't always been so great with dealing with big situations like this on the brink of her first Grand Slam semi-final, it's a big deal. 
Even in January, back at the Australian Open, she was 5-2 up on Karolina Pliskova in the third set and completely tightened with nerves and went down to the check and was open afterwards about how she couldn't handle it mentally. That could really have been a turning point for her. However, she is love three in WTA finals. One of them was on clay courts this season. She lost to Daria Kasatkina in the Charleston final in April. So it's going to be interesting to see how she handles the enormity of the occasion in the semi-finals. Meanwhile, she faces a player who is no stranger to this, Timea Beshinsky. Now, Beshinsky has had a great past couple of years at the French Open. She made the semi-finals in 2015, losing only to Serena Williams, and the quarter-finals last year. And both this year and last year, she's beaten Venus Williams in round four, and she generally looks very comfortable on the clay, despite not having done much on the rest of the tour in recent times. She was the dark horse early in this tournament. She dropped nine games before facing Venus, dropped just three games in the last two sets of her encounter with the American, and against Kristina Mladenovic, she was facing potentially her toughest test. The crowd was expected to be raucous. Mladenovic has been refusing to lose all events, but she took it in her stride. The crowd wasn't that loud, and Mladenovic was clearly bothered by the conditions, the wind whipping up. Bakshinsky, like Wozniacki, is more of a counter-punching player and the conditions were definitely better suited to her game. And she was so calm. It was a bit of a break fest. There were eight breaks of serve in the match. Neither woman could seem to hold the advantage, but it was Bakshinsky who hung tough in the pressure moments coming through 6-4, 6-4. Ostapenko has had quite good preparation for this clash in facing Wozniacki, however, there are several things that will make Bakshinsky potentially a more lethal opponent. Rather than just blocking balls back, she puts effect on the shots, she uses slice to great effect, she can bring out some lethal drop shots, and generally her ball is a lot slicker than Wozniacki's, as well as getting a lot of balls back, Bashinsky is potentially going to make it harder for Ostapenko to control her shots, which is what troubled her early on with Wozniacki, and with Bashinsky's mental composure and real comfort on the courts, she may not allow her the time to get back into things that Wozniacki did. Both players have lost only three matches on clay this season, however, Bashinsky has nine wins to Ostapenko's 14, so the amount of match wins behind her might be helpful to the Latvian, she may draw confidence from that. A phrase I have heard thrown around a bit over the last day is people saying that certain players have nothing to lose. I completely disagree with this. No, Yelena Ostapenko and Tamiya Bitschinski were not expected to make this round of the event. However, it is unlikely that either of them will see things looking this rosy again at a major tournament for a long time. No Serena Williams, no Victoria Azarenka, Halep and Pliskova on seeds number two and three on the other side of the draw. This is a major opportunity for either of them to get to a major final, and I find it hard to believe that any of them will be playing that match on Thursday thinking that they have nothing to lose. They have a major shot at one of the biggest stages in tennis. They will be playing on court Philippe Chatier. Ostapenko got her win over Wozniacki on court Suzanne Longlin. The conditions are slower, and as Ostapenko is instinctively aggressive, the ball will travel slower, Beshinsky will get to those shots, it may wind her up a bit, she may not be able to have the consistency, although given that she's got to this round of a tournament, you have to expect that she would come prepared. Prediction time, as I've said, I don't have any prediction written down, I am toying back and forth. A few times in the last video, a few times? That would make it like every time. One or two times in the last video, I didn't go with my gut instinct. I didn't pick Bishinsky to beat Mladenovic, but inwardly I kind of thought she would. Ostapenko. It all depends on the mentality. Given that she's the aggressive player, I would think the match would be on Ostapenko's racket, but then you have the effects that Bishinsky puts on her, the shots that she plays, and that could really mess with her. So, oh, I really don't know. The safe option would be to go with Bashinsky, who has been here before and led by a set and a break against Serena. But I think Ostapenko wants this quite a lot, and that's going to motivate her. She has come back against two big-name opponents when, on occasion, it's looked like she's been done. I'm going to take a really big risk and say Yelena Ostapenko in three sets. However, inwardly, I kind of think... maybe I think Bashinsky in three. 
And by saying Ostapenko, I've probably given Bashinsky a pass to the final. So yes, Ostapenko in three sets, but you can tell I'm not confident in that. Okay, so naturally that took way longer than I expected it to, and we're finally onto the second semi-final. In complete contrast to the other half of the draw, both projected semi-finalists have made it to the last four. Number three seed Simona Hallett against number two seed Karolina Pliskova. Now, Pliskova is the semi-finalist I have seen least of this tournament. Before facing Caroline Garcia in the quarterfinals, she had yet to face a player ranked inside the top 60, and yet she had still managed to lose two sets, which doesn't make you that confident in her form. However, she has still managed to progress, showing mental resilience, and in her clash with Garcia, she only needed the two sets to progress. I wouldn't say I'm surprised, but I am quite impressed that Pliskova is handling herself this well on clay. Prior to the French Open, she had a five wins to four losses record on the dirt this season, so based purely on that, she wasn't expected to go deep. But she made her breakout at a Grand Slam at the US Open in September last year, making the finals after really pushing away at the big events to try and break through for so long, finally got there, pushed Kerber to three sets in the final, and it kind of appears like she's bringing a mentality now for the big occasions. Also, Pliskova has a very flat, slick game, big serve, massive ground strokes, a game custom made for the faster surfaces of grass and hard courts. I'm thinking that perhaps the time that Clay gives her to get to balls is helping her out. Movement was never her strong point, and she's never been the fastest player. And Serena talked about how she likes Clay more because it gives you more time to get up to the ball. She says you can kind of relax a bit if you like and she plays with a power game like Pliskova, so maybe there are similarities there. Pliskova can mix it up when she needs to, but she does generally play from the baseline, and it will be consistency that is bringing her through the tournament, and that goes back to the mentality that she has, which keeps her calm, keeps her composed. You rarely see her yelling, smashing a racket. She is so composed, so focused, and that has really helped her get to where she is. Speaking of that, we move on to our next player, Halep, and she has really showcased some of that great mentality recently. One of the issues for Halep before the quarterfinals was that she had potentially not been tested enough, saved set points against Daria Kasatkina, but nothing more than that. She rolled past Suarez Navarro, 6-1, 6-1, in the fourth round. But this is the case no longer after her clash with Zvitolina, who beat her in the finals of Rome just a few weeks ago. Zvitolina was always going to be a challenge, a defensive player who can turn on the aggression like Halep herself, and she was a set and a break up on Halep in their quarterfinal. Not only that, she had a match point in the tiebreak, but Halep went for her shots, was really composed, and just showcased the mentality that the tour is missing quite often. Once Halep had taken that tie break, she went on to roll through the deciding set. It's such a change in her, only recently Darren Cahill, her coach, left her because he was unhappy with her mentality during matches, her negativity, and his splitting with her for a short time meant that Halep really reassessed this part of her game and it has come on so much in a matter of weeks and has really made the difference for her. She had a great clay court season coming into the event, made the final of Madrid and won, made the final of Rome and might have won had it not been for her injury. So that's two straight Premier Mandatory finals that she made and that is pretty much unheard of on the WTA at the moment outside of Serena Williams. Looking at the head-to-head, -head, they have had six matches against each other and Halep leads the rivalry 4-2. However, they have never faced off on clay, only on hard courts which makes you wonder about how this is going to match up. Pliskova's power obviously won't be so lethal, and Halep has the defensive game that she can turn into attack, and the court coverage to really give Pliskova trouble. Halep also won their last meeting, which was in Canada last summer. She won it 6-3, 6-3, and notably, that was only a matter of weeks before Pliskova made the US Open final, so the Czech was in decent form. I didn't think I was so confident in my prediction, but having talked through that, 
I am more sure of it. I'm going to predict Halep in two sets again. I just think that her mentality and consistency will win the day against a player who is made more for hard courts. Also, I predicted Halep to win the event at the outset and feel like I should stick with her. Okay, so there you have it in the somewhat dying light. Thank you so much for watching. I loved reading all your comments on the last video. Please leave them down below here and let me know your predictions for these two matches and which final you would like to see. Now, we might not have the top seeds on both sides, but there is a potential for a really interesting clash of styles. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and as always, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll be back soon with a men's semi-finals preview and predictions. So thank you and see you next time.